Hey guys, welcome back to the Limitless course. I hope you've enjoyed it so far. If you haven't seen the previous videos, definitely go and check them out. There's links all over the place here. And make sure you've subscribed and clicked that bell notification icon so you get notified for future videos. Now let's get into it. So my favorite productivity technique, something that I've discovered recently is something called Scrum, an agile methodology. Now, the key concept here is build, measure, and learn. What I mean by this is it's a three-step process. You build something, you try it out, and you measure how it's going, you learn how it did, and then you go back to the beginning of the cycle. One of the archaic ways of approaching business, approaching productivity, is to create a 15-page business plan and then to plan everything out, spend a lot of time in theory. And then when you finally go to market, when you finally get to practicing it, what happens? Those ideas are out of date. Now, lean methodology, agile methodology, scrum, what these things are all about are doing things quick, being agile and nimble, which is, as you can imagine, incredibly important in the world that we live in today. Things are constantly changing. The maps that we hold of our ideas of ourselves and the reality around us, they are not the territory. The best phone on the market right now, the best camera on the market right now, they're not going to be there tomorrow. Same with the platforms that we use, the techniques that we're using for all kinds of different things, that things are evolving so quickly, we need to be agile if we're gonna stay on top of the trends and understand how to get more out of our lives. And what Scrum allows you to do is do more work in half the time. So how does it work? Well, I'm gonna share my screen with you so you can really see in detail how I use this technique when it comes to managing my own projects as CEO of Revolution Hive. Now, I'm responsible for a small team that is very focused. You know, we only have a certain amount of resources and it's really important that we use the capacity that we have to create the biggest impact we can on the world. Now, this is how it works. You have something called a sprint. A sprint lasts for two to three weeks and the idea is you're going to choose something that you're gonna focus on to get done in that time period. And one of the key principles in Scrum is the principle of half done is not done at all. And at the end of the sprint, whatever it is that you're creating, let's say you're a business creating an app, you wanna make sure that the thing you've created can go to market, that somebody can use it. Now, if you're a student, for example, you could use this to say, I'm gonna create an essay in two weeks. So your essay isn't done until you can give it to someone to read. So half done is not done at all. The reason this is useful is because it makes you prioritize what it is that you need to get done. And then what happens is you create a board like this. For every project you have, you, I suggest, and this is the way I use it, you have a board. So for example, I'm just gonna use YouTube so you can easily understand um, how I would use it in this scenario. Now, I have a bunch of different projects going on with YouTube. I have some collaborations that I'm working on. And I also have some courses like this one. So we're going to use this limitless course and how I actually planned it to show you how you can use Scrum to be more productive. Now, the first thing that I would do is, in this column on the left, list all the possible tasks related to my project. Now, you've got things like planning, you've got things like filming, editing, research, promotion, and I would create as many cards as I can think of. Now, the important thing to make a, a note here is that I'm working on my own. If you're in a team, ideally you want a team of about three to nine people max to do this and you would have different roles within the team but as a team if you're doing this you would list all the things in this left hand column and then what would happen is you would rank their size now i mentioned before that we are very bad at estimating how long things take and scrum is brilliant as a technique at doing this so at revhive we have four rankings we have a like a star, a rocket, and a heart. And each of those, uh, you could use t-shirt sizes, for example. I just use these because these are free stickers in Trello. Each of these is worth a number of points. So once you've listed all the tasks that you need to get done, you would assign a 
a relevant sticker or a relevant size. So let's say you're using um, my sticker system or you're using t-shirt sizes. You could have small, medium, large and extra large. You go through each task and as a team or as an individual you discuss how big do I think that task is? How long, you know, how much effort, you're judging it in terms of effort, do you think it would take? And each of those is worth a number of points. This is where it gets really interesting. The point score goes something like this, three, five, eight, 11, and th or 13. So let's say you've got a bunch of tasks, as you can see here, some of them have got likes, some of them have got stars. So in our system, we have like is a three, star is a five, rocket is an eight, and heart is a 13. So some of these tasks are massive. I know they require, you know, the research into this course. I wanna make sure I've got the best information possible. I've got quite a few different things to look at. So I know these are hearts. Now, the next thing I would do is prioritize. Well, which one would I do first? And I would put it into my in progress column. And now the idea is over the two to three week sprint in this project, I wanna get as many things as I can done. And at the end of the sprint, you would tot up all of the points that you accumulated in your team. Now you can see how this works very quickly. So if you're working as an individual, you very quickly start to understand one, how long things take, but two, the number of points, the velocity as it's called, that you can get done in that time period. And then the idea is at the end of the sprint, we would come together as a team. If you're an individual, maybe you find an accountability partner to discuss what went well, what you learnt, and what you're gonna do better next time. And also celebrating the things you accomplished. If you're in a team, what you would do is you would share and demonstrate to the rest of the departments in your organization or the rest of your team, the prototype that you've created. And the benefit of this is, you don't spend time thinking about what you're gonna do or how you're gonna do it. You get it done really, really quickly. And so you can very quickly build, measure and learn. Instead of spending hours and hours, you know, planning the perfect website, you can build it in a day, test it, get data, see what your customers think or what the people using it think and immediately go back to the next sprint and improve and over time you'll notice your productivity continually improves because you can change different variables the talent in your team the skills in your team the number of people and one of the core principles is if you are working in a team you want to make sure that your team has all of the resources available to complete that sprint so there should be no skills that are missing that they need to go to and you know in revolution hive we use this like i mentioned for a if a, a project takes longer than a week, generally I would give it its own board. And then we would just focus on moving it across. If you work in a physical location, we have you know team members all over the world, so we use Trello. You could have it, and I would recommend, up on the board so things are transparent, so everybody can see exactly what's happening. And this is a very powerful way to build transparency so everyone can see what's happening when, if there are issues, they can be resolved immediately. And the final piece of this is if you are working in a team or even individually, every day you would have a maximum 15 minute daily check-in where you discuss three questions. What did you do yesterday to help the team finish the sprint? What are you going to do tomorrow or today, sorry? And are there any holds, blocks or challenges? Now, if you're in the team, you would also have what's known as a product owner and a coach. The role of the product owner is to keep that backlog full with as many tasks as possible. So there's always more to do. And the team's focus is just to move things across in those columns. The coach's role is to ask questions to facilitate the productivity of the team. And, and this is a great way of working that has worked really effectively for us. It works really effectively for me as an individual. And I'm sure it'll work really effectively for you. So tell me in the comments below, you know, have you used Scrum before? Have you ever heard of it? It's a very, very different technique that I want to promote because it's been very powerful for us and it has certainly ramped up our productivity. So shout out to the creators of these fantastic techniques. Uh, there is a book called Scrum, do, half the, do twice the work in half the time that you can check out. I'll put links in the description and make sure you like you comment and you subscribe, otherwise you won't know when videos come out. And I'll see you 
in the next video lesson on this limitless course that I hope you're enjoying. See you in the next video. Peace.